Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship. Christmas Eve 2022. So nice to see you all. And I don't even recognize you all. That's also nice. So welcome to our Buffsters and their friends and family. We're going to start with a carol sing. And they, all the songs are in the gray hymn book, which you should find in the back of the pew in front of you. And we love to stand up if we are able while we sing. So please rise in body or spirit and join us. We'll start with Deck the Hall. If you don't know it, maybe you don't know the verse two and three. It's 235, 235 in the gray hymn book. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient youth I carol, fa la 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 la. Please, please let us sing it in French. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
players on flute with Melanie on piano. Still, still, still. So let's stand for one more carol together as the choir comes up to join us on stage. It's 239, 239 in your gray hymn book. Go tell it on the mountain. Come on up, choir. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hill and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their flocking
sing you another hallelujah. Good evening. Welcome to Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship, in person and on Zoom. I'm Reverend Paul Beckel, and I'm happy to be joined by Buff member and retired UU minister, Reverend Barbara Tenhove, who will help lead tonight's service. Tonight's service reflects both the liberal spirit of our faith traditions as well as ancient traditions of this blessed time. It is our hope that our evening will be, uh, be one of beauty, reflection, and fulfillment. Before we move deeper into our service, let me remind you to turn off your cell phones. Let us not disturb the magic of this night with any strange ringing, unless it's Christmas bells. And I also gently suggest that as beautiful as we hope this service is tonight, and you just had the opportunity to get rid of your applause for the night, let us not share our appreciation through clapping, but rather through our warm spirits and a twinkle, if that helps you to express your joy for the music. And we're going to take a moment to practice in the light what we will do later in the darkness lighting our candles. So, um, Paul, why don't you go ahead and light. In order to keep wax off of the floor, all unlit candles, notice mine is unlit, should bow to the light. The lit candle stays straight up. And then I turn mine the minute it's lit, ooh, straight up. 
so that the bobache can catch the wax. So if you have a candle on you, can you practice? Practice pretending one is lit and one is not? All right. All right, have fun with the bobache. <laughs> Okay, enough practicing. You'll have a chance to do it for real in a little while. And finally, most of the music tonight will be sung with the lights up, but we will sing Silent Night in the Darkness. Now, we'll only sing the first verse a number of times, and if you forget or don't know the words, humming is always acceptable. But speaking of music, let's sing together hymn 231, Angels We Have Heard on High. You'll find your words now in your order of service. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together. <laughs> Angels we have swiftly each night, and the bright stars are mere pinpricks of light millions of miles away. The moon's glow is cold, and even the sun seems unable to warm the icy dawn. It is within this winter chill that Christmas comes. Perhaps it is because of winter that we must have Christmas. We must have Christmas to warm our hearts like the logs in the bonfire warm the frosty evening air. We must have Christmas to light a bright blaze in our souls, even as the flickering candles make the winter's gloom a little cheerier. We must have Christmas because children must be born and the miracle of life must continue. A child born in a stable can become an example to the world, and we must have Christmas to celebrate the victory of new birth 
over death. Each of us has a need for Christmas, for warmth and love and light in the midst of the winter darkness. Tonight we gather because we need each other and we need Christmas. May our time together be an affirmation of the power of this season to touch our hearts and challenge our souls to greater good. Come in to Christmas here. And let's continue in the spirit of the holiday by singing. I'll say the numbers, but know that all the words are also printed in your order of service. Number 253, it's Adeste Fidelis in Latin, I'll, O Come All Ye Faithful in English. Please note that the refrain is sung always in Latin. Adeste Fidelis. So please rise and body your spirit and we'll sing together. Adeste Fidelis Leti triumphantes venite, venite, May we ignite hope 
and meaning from the familiar songs and stories we share tonight. And may we be fully present to the gift of this time together. And now the choir will sing a wonderful carol written by a 19th century Unitarian minister who witnessed war and struggle in his own time as we do in ours. While the song is old, the sentiment is timeless. So I invite the choir to over here. The Christmas story is found in two of the four Gospels, both Matthew and Luke. Though the tales of Jesus' birth were written long after his death, they have a power and beauty that has lasted for 2,000 years. Here is the story from both Gospels, crafted into this form by Jeff Brer. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus decreed that the people of the world should be counted. And so Joseph left Nazareth in Galilee and traveled to Judea to be counted with Mary, his wife, who was great with child. He went to Bethlehem, the city of David, because he was of the house and lineage of David. While they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now Jesus was born in the days of Herod the king. In Jerusalem, wise men from the east came to seek an audience with a newborn child who they called the king of the Jews. They had seen his star in the east and had come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. So he gathered the chief priests and scribes together and demanded of them where this new king would be born. After consulting the scripture, they determined that it must be in Bethlehem of Judea. Then Herod called the wise men into his private council and inquired of them anxiously when the star appeared, that is, to know exactly the time the new king would be born. And he encouraged them to go to Bethlehem. And he said, go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may go and honor him also. So the wise men departed for Bethlehem, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced, and when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's reflect on this part of the story as we sing number 255, There's a Star in the East. Please rise and body your spirit. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, children.
in the same country, shepherds were abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel spoke soothingly to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy for you and for all people. For today in Bethlehem is born a Savior, and this shall be a sign to you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward all. So let us sing now of Christmas. Hymn number 254, Sing We Now of Christmas. Please rise in body or spirit as again we sing together. Sing We Now of Christmas. The Interfaith Coalition, made up of 55 Whatcom County religious institutions and other local partners, celebrates its 40th anniversary this year. The coalition has 14 housing units where families live as they work toward self-sufficiency. And there are several other programs. With the aid of participating congregations, the Family Promise Program feeds and shelters additional families, three quarters of them led by single parents. CAST, C-A-S-T, which stands for Coffee and Sandwiches Together, serves meals in downtown Bellingham, by the downtown Bellingham Library four nights a week, rain or shine or snow throughout the year. Through the coalition's winter coat drive and project warm up, volunteers collect or knit or sew coats, scarves, blankets, and mittens. 
and other project distributes books to children and families. Teams from Buff participate in these programs and of course volunteer opportunities will continue to be available. You can find out about them on our new, in our, news, our Buff newsletter or at the Interfaith Coalition website. The stories told by families and individuals who have been supported by these programs are both heart-wrenching and poignant. For example, Joel and Bethany have been married for 24 years and have eight children. They have been longtime tenants in a rental home when the owner had to sell. They found another rental, but when the rent ballooned beyond affordability, they were evicted. I think we're all familiar with the extraordinary escalation of housing costs in Whatcom County. So the family slept in tents and vehicles for months while looking for a place to live. Until now being recently able to move into an interfaith coalition home for a year, which will offer them a bit of stability while they rebuild their lives. As the ushers come around with collection baskets now, please give generously that one more, and then one more, and then one more family in our community might find shelter from the cold.
Around the world this Christmas Eve, and with it being Christmas Day in other parts of the world, the holiday is being celebrated in many ways and for many different reasons. Both Christians and non-Christians recall the birth of a child in a manger. Some who insist that all things material and human are completely distinct from the divine, celebrate Christmas as the one time that God appeared on earth. Some insist that whether Jesus existed or not, the myth of the nativity is a profound reminder of both our personal vulnerability and our sacred capability our ability to care for something beyond our own vulnerability. And then there are some who think that this is just a silly debate and let's get on with it. Regardless, it is good to be together tonight in person and on Zoom. All, regardless of your theology, all who come in the spirit of goodwill are welcome here. Whether you understand Christmas as a time to ponder the significance of a savior coming into the world to atone for the sin of wretched humanity, or you're focused on finding joy and creating joy and giving thanks for unearned blessings and the wonder of it all. Or if you're wondering if you'll make it through another night. On one of the last clear sky evenings before this snowfall, I was walking along Holly Street from downtown toward my quiet neighborhood, observing the sun setting over the bay. It's so gorgeous there in each moment as the colors change, intensifying, deepening, and then fading as the sun disappears over the horizon. I had stopped to watch, but while there was still some remaining light, I turned back toward home, past Maritime Heritage Park. As I turned, I saw something move near me in the bushes. I stopped again, startled. I can't say for sure if I felt afraid because there's a part of me that likes to think of myself as a person of goodwill who just wanted to make sure I wasn't disturbing a person who was trying to bed down for the night. I stood still another moment, and then as I began to move, the figure began to move with me, and it became apparent that it was my own shadow. It was a part of me there in the bushes, a part of me that night, outside of me. In a moment, the sun would fall below the horizon. After I passed, that spot would still be dark. Would my shadow, that part of me, still be there? In the dark? How would I know? Because so it still is there, with it being just after solstice tonight, again one of the longest nights of the year. And so I reflect on this Christmas Eve about that story about a babe who would consist of two parts, earthly and holy, something very concrete and something inexpressible. That story reminds me that my earthly self is accompanied here, there, and always by a reality outside and beyond myself my shadow, 
and my joy, my freedom, my ancestors, my community, my vulnerability, all intangible and not fully explainable. Ponder this thing in your heart tonight. Perhaps, regardless of our theology, regardless of why we celebrate Christmas, perhaps we are all both bodily and transcendent beings. We are perhaps both darkness and light, perhaps alone, on our own, and inescapably one.
It is Christmas, a time of joy and love. But it is also the darkest time of the year. And it is in this dark time that we celebrate light, even as we remember the darkness. In darkness, we light candles to remind ourselves that love exists, that hope abides. In darkness, we light candles to help us experience the night a little bit better, just as the stars make the darkness glimmer. On Christmas Eve, we remember the dark, the darkness of winter, of animal stable, of the womb. On Christmas Eve, we remember the light, the flicker of a star, the flame of new birth, the light of hope come into our world. So tonight, let us enter the darkness for a few moments. Feel the darkness around us and listen to its rhythm. Into the darkness, we bring our light. We light this candle for joy. May it shine for all who find delight, even in the midst of challenge and struggle. Into the darkness, we, we bring, bring our, our light. light. We light this candle for peace. May it shine for all who understand that for peace to come, we must work for justice. Into, Into the, the darkness, darkness. We bring, we bring our, our light. light. We light this candle for love. May it shine for all who give freely of themselves to others, caring and sharing from their hearts. Into, Into the, the darkness, darkness we, we bring, bring our, our light. light. We light this candle for hope. May it shine for all who have faith that we truly can build a better world for all people everywhere. The darkness is powerful. 
but so is the light we can bring. A candle is a small thing, but when one light touches another, the flame increases, the power of it grows. You are such a light. You have the power to brighten the darkness. When the birth of a light in you is passed to others, when one heart kindles another. Our hearts are aflame with the beauty of this cold winter's night. With only the light of our candles to guide us, let us recall the ancient story of Jesus' birth by singing together that most beautiful of carols. Silent night. people around you, lit by candlelight, our faces aglow, but so are our hearts, holding out hope for the world, that perhaps the way we feel right now may be the way we feel forever, because it is so beautiful. Let us sing one more time these gorgeous words. Silent night. Please raise your candles.
May these words from Howard Thurman bless us as we move from darkness toward the light. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, and to make music in the heart. As we go forth on this splendid night, take one last look at these beautiful candles and trust that the lights we have lit tonight will continue to shine in our hearts. As we sing together our final carol, which is the first Noel, I invite you to believe in the magic of Christmas and be full of joy, even as we must slowly but surely return this room to light once again. I guess we're just going to go ahead. Must a certain poor shepherd in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so so that peace may truly come to all the earth. Please remain standing for our postlude, feel, feeling free to sing along as you choose, or to mingle, or to dance with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Blessings on us all. Merry Christmas and good night. Good night, everyone. Amen and blessed be. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.